That entire sequence was completely shot on the new Sony A6700. I posted that video by itself yesterday and it did really well. Over the past 48 hours, it got like nearly 700 views. It had comments of people saying that they loved the video and it was awesome. I was so happy that that video was getting shown to people. I then thought if I posted that video, but as a YouTube short, it would then reach a whole new audience. Once that was uploaded as a YouTube short, I then noticed that the quality wasn't great. I'm not sure why. So I made the decision to delete that YouTube short because you know I had the standalone video and it was doing really well. So it didn't really matter. And I was doing two things at once and I accidentally deleted the main video. Yeah, really annoying. But I've re-uploaded it, so we'll see, you know, if it gets the same amount of traction. It was just good because it was being shown to people, you know, it was going in front of people's eyes that like, and they were clicking on it, it was just great. So that's always very satisfying. Um, and when you're a small channel, when that, when something like that happens, you're like really excited about it. I literally feel like such an idiot. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to be going through my video settings for the Sony a6700. And these are the settings that I used for this cinematic sequence at the beginning. And I know a lot of this footage isn't, you know, groundbreaking. I kind of thought I wanted to get it out as soon as possible. And also it kind of shows a lot of variation um, of, you know, dark shots, light shots, outside shots, shots that are lit by artificial lighting. So that's why I think it's quite good. And that's why I feel like a lot of people quite enjoyed it. Now I've titled this video, the best cinematic settings, which is true. These are the best cinematic settings in my opinion, but you know, it takes more than just settings on a camera to make something look cinematic. You know, lighting is a massive, massive factor into making something look cinematic. And so is composition and a few other things. So, you know, settings is just a good place to start. So here are my video settings. Feel free to uh, follow along or not. Up to you. The first thing to do is change your camera to video mode. Hit menu and go to the first page. File format is XAVCS 4K and my movie settings is 25p and my record setting is 140m 42 10-bit. Come out of that and go down to proxy settings and I have proxies on. I find them really useful. If you're not sure what proxies are, there's loads of videos out there explaining what they are. Um, I'm happy to make one. Come out of that and go down to audio recording. Audio recording is on and my recording level is at 12 and my wind noise reduction is off. My image stabilization is set to active. Go down to the exposure menu and go to color and tone and picture profile. Go on picture profile one and change the gamma to S log three. And my color mode is S gamma three cine. I don't know if I've said that right. And my soft skin effect is off. Um, zebras I actually don't have on, I use the histogram or the meter. On the focus menu go down to peaking display, I have mine on mid and my peaking colour is red. Then go down to setup and head down to number 7, monitor finder. My monitor brightness is sunny weather, make the monitor nice and bright for you so you can see what you're doing. And then after that you want to head down to power setting option and set your auto power off temperature to high. And then you wanna come out of all of that, set your ISO to the base ISO, which for S-Log3 is 800. Change your shutter speed to 50 because it's double your frame rate, which is 25p. Then hit menu, go all the way back up to the first one shooting, and then go down to shooting mode and hit camera set memory, and then select number one. And now whenever you select number one on your wheel, it will be these settings, which is such a time saver. Now you're gonna to wanna to change it back to manual mode. Go into image quality, file format, and select XAVCS 4K, and change your frame rate to 50p, and your recording setting to 200M, 42, 10-bit. The rest is all pretty much exactly the same. Go into proxy settings, turn them on. Go down to audio recording, turn it on. Set it to 12. Image stabilization, set as active. Exposure, color tone, picture profile one, S-Log3 and s gorma 3 Cine. Zebras I don't use. Turn peaking display on to mid and red. Go to monitor brightness, sunny weather, and down to power setting option and set your power temperature to high. Change your shutter speed to double your frame rate, which is 50p. Select your base ISO and open your aperture as wide as possible. Go back into menu, then go up to the shooting page, go down to shooting mode, 
select camera set memory and select number two. And now whenever you change your wheel to number two, it will have these settings. Set your camera back to manual, hit menu, and then go to image quality recording, XAVC S4K, and change your movie settings to 100p or 120p, and your record setting to 280m, 42, 10 bit, and then the rest is exactly the same, apart from proxies don't actually work on ultra slow motion. You also want to change your audio again, if you do record audio in slow motion, just in case. And also image stabilization can only be on standard, not active on ultra slow motion. But other than that, the rest is exactly the same as the previous ones. Color tone, go down to picture profile, picture profile one, S-Log3, s gorma 3 Cine. Zebras obviously don't have on. And peaking display, change it to mid and the color to red. And go down to the setup and go to find a monitor sunny weather so it's nice and bright then power setting option auto power off temperature set to high change your shutter speed to w frame rate which is 100p or 120 put your iso as the base and open your aperture as wide as possible then hit menu go up to shooting then go down to shooting mode camera set memory and select number three. Now, whenever you change the wheel to number three, you'll have the slow motion settings. And that's it. I hope you found this video helpful. The Sony a6700 is such an amazing camera. I was using the a6500 before this and it's a big step up, it's awesome. We are so close to 200 subscribers, which is awesome. Hopefully this video will push that over the line. If not, you know, I'm gonna be uploading a lot anyway, so I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. But yeah, I also just wanted to say thank you for showing all the love in my recent videos. That means the world to me. And I will see you in the next video.